Okay, this is a video response to the uh, City Xscape channel. And uh, we're talking about two topics. One being, uh, should you take vitamins uh, in the form of supplements or pills or something like that? And um, why specifically I don't? Uh, so we'll define a vitamin as basically any chemical compound that is essential for humans. Um, and uh, being a micronutrient, let's just call it micronutrients. So, so let, let, let's just, this is the framework I use for this. So, the vitamins just assume they're, they're better assimilated and they're more bioavailable when they're in their natural food product. So, just take that at face value. Let's even assume that you can get some benefit from pills and vitamins, which I don't believe. They've done some studies. These are tough. These are surveys, so they're epidemiological studies. We can't really infer too much from it. But older people that took more vitamins, there's a neutral effect or even a slight detrimental effect in these studies. So in that regard, I, I don't think vitamins work. But even, even if vitamins did work, why are you not getting enough from your food? And uh, uh, you should ask yourself that. And let's talk about antioxidants. So antioxidants are there for the plant. Again, no data, no conclusive evidence that we can even we even need antioxidants. There's zero benefit. So again, let's play devil's advocate. Assuming you could antioxidants are great for humans and you can use this. This is not the case, but you could mimic the same pathway with things like caloric restriction, caloric timing coffee even, heat and cold exposure, and so forth. So if you're already living a lifestyle uh, 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 that promotes this, stuff that you already know is good for you, these vitamins aren't going to do much. And I, I think there's a, there's a, a tendency to, to think that I, I have in control and I'm going to take all these vitamins and it's going to make my health better. I'll tell you what I do take. I take... Uh, vitamin D3 because it's very difficult to eat enough fish and food to get your value and I believe the those you, it's hard to have too much of it actually and with with fatty food that's absorbed I take vitamin D3 and sometimes I will take uh, fish oil uh, for the same way and they're both absorbed with fatty meals and I'll take creatine if I'm trying to put on some mass creatine is a one of the most studied uh, micronutrients ever for its brain benefits, its cognitive uh, benefits, for its performance benefits in the gym and all this stuff. Creatine is well studied and creatine, again, it's a thing where it's, you could eat two to three pounds of steak a day and you will be fine. You don't need to eat it, but it's hard to do that, right? So those are exceptions, I would say, but vitamins, lettered named vitamins, I, I, I do not take. The, there's no evidence for them working. And in fact, there's evidence uh, and there's good there's, there's good um, evidence that suggests that it's better to have the vitamins in food. And taking a bunch of vitamins, it won't make you live. It won't make you live longer. So, like, let's talk about herbal supplements. Herbal supplements, again, unregulated dosages, and they affect people somewhat differently. But if something is working for you, be it ashwagandha, uh, something like that. For, some people have massive side effects from that and some people say, oh my God, it cures my anxiety. Again, there's other things you could do to cure your anxiety. Sleeping, heat and cold exposure, um, and really, really a uh, sense of purpose, like lower your body fat. Lower your body fat, your testosterone levels will probably go up because it'll improve other parameters and then you will, you will uh, have more uh, purpose and more conviction in what you're doing, probably your anxiety and depression will go down. So again, unregulated uh, uh, ashwagandha stuff or uh, unregulated stuff like that, I, I don't have a problem with it. I personally don't take it because everything we have is from the sun and from the food we eat. I, I gave you some exceptions, uh, but that's why I don't take vitamins. Heat and cold exposure. So heat and cold exposure, uh, they work on the same down, uh, 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 upstream, uh, they, they have the same effect uh, really at a, at a high, uh, high heat or high cold. They, they work on the same heat shock proteins or cold shock proteins, same molecules. And this will, this will uh, affect the cascade. So, so like in, in Russia and Finland, hot exposure in the form of dry saunas 
that's been around for um, uh, for like almost a millennia, hundreds of years at least. But the science is finally coming out on sauna use. So, so extreme heat exposure. What are the benefits? So you have a uh, uh, improved immunity, interleukins, white blood cells, improved specifically respiratory immunity. So when they were closing down the saunas during that thing a few years ago, it was absolutely insanity, especially a bunch of young people going in a sauna. They thought, you know, uh, but it literally prevents, it lowers rate of pneumonia and respiratory illness, which I think is funny. Heat exposure does. And then, then you have longevity studies. I think it was men in Finland. The one, two, three, four, five, six, literally the more days they reported going in a sauna, they had better cardiovascular mortality and overall mortality. We can extrapolate that to younger people and women, I think. Uh, because um, it's cardiovascular benefits. You're not necessarily running with the joints, but you have the same uh, effect on your uh, cardiovascular system. So I believe that's why that works. And then you have uh, you have a, a bump in growth hormone like four to six times that lasts only a few hours. Improved immunity, and you will see how you how well you sleep because sleeping well will just improve everything else in life. And sauna use will will improve that. And as well as, um, again, subjective well-being or mood, lowered the rate of, if you have anxiety issues, sauna is the best. You know, it's amazing. So, cold exposure, I, I, I know that it's popular among the, the Silicon Valley, like when you have some money, you, you, you get like a barrel sauna, you do these Tony Robbins, these like, cold. so as I said, since it works on the same um, processes, since it works on the same physiologic if, you, if you're doing heat exposure, that's enough. If you, cold exposure, okay, it, it's fine, but there's a, a small, tiny chance if you have a um, coronary artery anatomic uh, abnormality, cold exposure can uh, can cause sudden cardiac death. If you don't know you have that, and probably you didn't get a cardiac CTA, so you probably don't know, and most people don't have it. But the, 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 the risk benefit to me is Sometimes I'll go, if I'm at some place and they have a nice cold, cold, cold pool, I will go, but not because I think it's different from heat exposure, it's the same thing. And uh, the, I think the studies for the sauna were dry, hot, so I don't like steamers, they don't get hot enough. So you need, I think the studies were 185, this is Fahrenheit, 185 for 20 minutes or like 194 for 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes, to get the effect. So you should feel pretty hot and uncomfortable uh, in that sauna. So uh, that's the reason why I'm not sold on vitamins at all. Uh, I don't believe I don't believe they work outside of eating them from food. Uh, they, uh, I, I I don't believe they work and on hot exposure. And yeah, hope you enjoyed.